How are you doing everybody, Jonathan here, and in this video I'm going to go over a topic that I think will help a lot of trainers out there, and that is getting over the anxiety of selling. As I know a lot of trainers try to avoid selling, or they say how much they dislike selling, not so much struggle, but disliked the aspect of selling, and that's something that you really have to get over, because in this profession it's very important that you understand how to sell your service and sell yourself as an individual. Moreover, when you decide to start your own business or run your own business, that's the that you're going to have to have a handle on because if you want to employ other trainers you have to properly train them as once you get to the higher level of ownership you understand the importance of having a strong sales staff as people aren't just going to jump in because they want to this is one of the hardest services to try to sell so i'm going to give you some tips to help you change your perspective on selling so that you can see more success but before I do, if you've not yet, make sure to click on that link up there and subscribe to my newsletter as I send out short articles every Monday on how to see success in the fitness industry. If you just haven't stumbled upon this video, click on the YouTube icon below and subscribe to this channel as I make videos every Wednesday based on questions that I get the most. And as always, if you've already subscribed to both my newsletter and to the YouTube channel, thank you very much for your support. And if you find the information in this video helpful, please click on the like button below the video player because every like that I get helps this channel. So when it comes to selling, I think a lot of people carry anxiety about selling because they have a poor perspective on what selling is. And most of the time when people think of personal training sales, they think about the negotiation process where essentially you're doing your best to try to overcome objections. You're thinking about the shock that comes on the client's face when they hear your prices. And you're thinking about having to convince them to fork over money before they leave the room because if they leave the room, then you're much less likely to secure the sale. And these are a lot of the uh, pieces of advice that I got early on when it came to selling. And I got this because people that were employed by my fitness centers were not personal trainers. They were salesmen from other industries that came in because they specialized in selling products. But you're not selling a product, you're selling a service. And when you're doing service selling and you're offering that service, it's a relationship sale. So it's as much about you as the person as it is about what they're buying into. So the first thing that you have to understand is that that way of selling is more coercion, all right? It's trying to talk somebody into buying into your service. It's trying to convince them. It's trying to make them feel bad about what they're doing right now instead of trying to help them understand how much better they'll feel as a result of your service. So a lot of people carry negative ideas about selling. So the first thing you have to do is eradicate that from your mind where selling is not a bad thing. Coercion is a bad thing. When we talk about selling, what is selling? Essentially, selling is a transfer of emotion from one person to another, whether favorable or unfavorable. So if I want to convince you to do something, I'm transferring favorable emotions, whereas if I don't want you to do something, I'm transferring unfavorable. If I don't want you to go to a restaurant, I'll say, don't go because of this, 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 and that. If I want you to go to a restaurant, I'll say, go because of this, this, this and that. So when you think about selling, it's not so much, or selling personal training, it's not so much about trying to get them to buy into your prices, but it's more about expressing your love for fitness and it's about understanding how much better life can be if they share in your appreciation for fitness and how that appreciation for fitness will lead to a healthier lifestyle for them so they can get what they want. Okay, so the first thing that you have to do in the sales process is understand what the client wants. You have to understand what brought them there. What was the straw that broke the camel's back and made them say, well, you know what, I gotta get in shape. Was it the fact that they have a reunion and all of a sudden they realize that they're not who they wanted to be or they went through an embarrassing situation with, um, you know, in public or with somebody else or clothes that didn't fit or they realize that they're gonna have a child and they need to stick around or they don't have the energy. You first have to understand that, all right? Because that's gonna be the emotional trigger that got them in and that's gonna be the emotional trigger that will help them see the end of the tunnel, which is their level of fitness. Now on your end, you have to also be able to express why you're in it, what you believe, um, where you wanna take them and how you're gonna take them there, all right? So it's more than just showing them the numbers, which is also a part of the sales process, but it's about explaining why you're into fitness, why you love doing this, why you continue to do this, what gives you the biggest you know, rise out of training and how you're gonna help this person get to their end goal. The next thing that trainers tend to struggle with or where it gets tense in the whole sales process is the prices, all right? Usually for whatever reason, uh, the fitness professional will withhold the price until the end, all right? And that speaks to a level of 
um, insecurity about the value that you perceive in your service. You should be indifferent to how the client feels about it because not everybody is willing to invest X amount of dollars into their fitness. So you have to understand that you're not going to close everybody. As a matter of fact, you're probably going to get way more no's than you're going to get yeses. But you have to understand that getting eight no's is worth it to get two yeses because it doesn't take that many yeses for you to make the income that you want. All right. You really have to figure that out beforehand so that when you get all that rejection, you don't worry. You just understand. All right. I'm probably not going to close most of the people. I just have to see more people and be indifferent to whether or not they want to invest or not, because I still get that resistance. I still get people saying, wow, you charge $200 a month. That's too steep. But my response is always, Hey, listen, try it out for the trial period, see how you like it. And then if it's worth it for you, great. If not, that's okay too. So you want to put yourself in a position to be able to offer your services for an extended period of time, long enough such that the person gets an idea of what your personality is like, rather than rushing them through their comp sessions and then trying to close them in a sale after knowing you for two, three hours. Cause you have to understand, or you have to sit down and think about what it would take for you to invest somewhere between 200 to $500 in a person that you just met. All right. Really stop and think about that. And you'll understand why you get the resistance and sales that people have. All right. Moreover, when people do express that they, you know, want to think about it or budget, you can't be so worried about people leaving the room or leaving the gym because they didn't close at that moment. Because the truth is if they really wanted to stay and they're really only concerned about finances, if they want to come back or if you made that big of an impression, then they'll come back. But if they're just looking for an excuse, they're going to always find an excuse. So there's no point in going through that tense. Well, why don't you just give me your card right now? Um, that then just shows that, you know, that you're not confident in the person coming back. And if you are able to convince somebody to stay with you, mainly through mind games or coercion, then that's going to be a nightmare client anyway, because you're always going to have to force them to come to the gym. You're always going to have to force them to do their meal plans. You have to force them to work hard because you have to force them to sign up. And long term, that's not the kind of client that you want, regardless of whether or not you're getting paid. You're better off offering a service to whomever wants to be there. All right. And then those are the kinds of people that are going to stay. And those are going to be the kinds of people that refer people over to you because they like you so much. So there's no need to carry as much negative uh, thoughts about selling because it's not about a convincing aspect. It's about expressing how much you love fitness, how much they want to get in there and how you can both work together. You will get a lot of no's, but that's just part of the game. That's something that you have to be comfortable with. And once you have the confidence to understand that that's part of it, I guarantee you'll see a lot more success. So I hope you found this video helpful. Um, remember, if you have any questions or comments specifically on selling, feel free to comment below as selling encompasses a lot of services. So if you know nothing about offering group training or if you've never done so, I definitely recommend that you check out my Dumbbells to Dollars course because it is the best resource for any fitness professional looking to success in the fitness industry. Not only will it go over how to teach group classes, but it'll also teach you how to market yourself better. It will go over nutritional coaching. And for those of you that want to start your own business, it'll give you the framework for starting your own business. So if you want to learn more about my Dumbbells to Dollars course, click on that image right there. For all you already certified personal trainers, this is also a CEU approved course for ACE, NASM, ISSA, and NSCA. So you can keep your certifications with this course current. However, if you're not certified, I definitely recommend that you get certified because it will allow you to build a foundation for the fitness industry. A great certification to start off with is going to be the NASM certification as I feel that it prepares you best for the lay client. And I've put together a study guide in my NASM made easy course, and it will condense the studying process by 50% so that you can pass the test the first time with a little anxiety for those of you that are afraid to take exams. So if you want more information, you can click on that image up there. So that's about it. I hope you found this information helpful. Remember, if you have any questions or comments, always feel free to comment below. Um, as always, I'll be back next Wednesday. As long as you remember to eat healthy, hydrate, drive safe, stress levels, all get rest. Don't slap anybody. Love your clients. They'll love you back. I'll see y'all tomorrow or the next day. And you have a good one.